Hello everyone, welcome once again to Investing with the Difference. We are back with an EOS update and uh, we will try to cover it uh, as soon as we can. There is a lot going on as usual, a lot of discussions, a lot of new uh, governance aspects. Let's start. Uh, so first of all, before we start uh, tomorrow, we have added another webinar. So this is for based on the feedback. Some people thought that when we went into the details of uh, EOS instruction and so on, even though they were basics, but some people are really new to EOS. So we have added another module which is going to be for beginners who are interested in developing on EOS and they want to start from very very basics about uh, what's really uh, goes on. Uh, first of all even people who are new to blockchain uh, they can join and we will talk about uh, what the blockchain uh, technology can solve. So do join us uh, we will post the link below and you can uh, directly join us on this uh, zoom webinar link. If you've already signed up for other modules uh, so that you can join us uh, send us a note and we will be able to add you for free now let's look at the market and uh, we are kind of very stable the bitcoin is kind of settling down and progressing um, below four thousand dollars it's not able to cross that again uh, but overall i think uh, litecoin has been very strong uh, and so is the binance coin i think that's a star uh, if you see here, it's already reached $15 from, I think, below 10 recently. It's uh, doing very well. I think a lot of uh, stuff is happening along with uh, Bitfinex launching EOS Phoenix. Binance is launching their own decentralized exchange. I think it's going to be a big year for decentralized exchanges and uh, progress of uh, crypto markets. Um, in addition, I think uh, for EOS, I think we're kind of stable now around $3.75 to $3.80 area. Let's have a quick look at the chart. We recovered from this recent fall. We had two stages of correction. Uh, we had some lows uh, recently in the last couple of days. But now again we are settling above this breakout area which is uh, I talked about it earlier. It's a great sign and I think if it can retain these areas against Bitcoin we can rally again. And of course it all depends on the rest of the market uh, because uh, EOS while it is uh, uh, performing better then uh, Bitcoin it does need uh, positive sentiment because ultimately it's a speculator market and uh, I think that it is looking pretty solid no major concern at this stage now let's get into the news items uh, so one thing which uh, we have been working on and uh, within the proxies and within some of the block producers as you know that uh, we are actually this is one of the referendums which uh, we have voted for and I wanted to highlight that if you are proxying with us we already voted for it uh, so as you know EOS has 5% inflation and only 1% goes to the block production and 4% is getting collected in uh, an account called EOS saving. Now this EOS saving account originally in the original white paper was designed for worker proposals that means a community driven funds which we can vote and we can decide which projects to fund. Now this never happened because of multiple reasons one is uh, there is no good consensus mechanism for spending that money right now it's almost 108 million dollar which is collected in this fund and it is growing every day because of this four percent inflation which is uh, and there is no identified use of this fund now my worry was uh, that this fund keeps growing it becomes big enough that uh, somebody can attack the network how can they do it if it becomes big enough it it gets justified to buy eos from exchange pump the price in the process they can become holder of let's say 70 80 million eos and uh, they can just become they can take all the votes voting slots in the top 21 and they can just kill the chain uh, because eos is so fast draining these funds into an exchange and by the time people will realize uh, you will have a broken chain with the uh, people just running away with these funds anyway i think uh, irrespective of that attack vector I think it's of course it's a very far-fetched uh, theory of how it can happen but you need to understand that this inflation is big amount and, and the more important thing is there is no real reason we are accumulating these huge funds because uh, WPS uh, has been kind of not accepted by community you know, even one of the referendum which was asking for 1 million uh, EOS for uh, WPS that is not getting yes votes that's mostly getting no votes um, I mean it has less than 40 percent or 30 percent votes now with that kind of a situation why do we keep adding this inflation why do we keep increasing the number of EOS tokens so my view is we should uh, kill the extra inflation and think about the news when we say that uh, EOS uh, 
uh, as a token, people who do not understand, who are like in the rest of the communities, when we announce that EOS is killing 80% of inflation, everybody understand inflation, even though if they don't understand depots, if they don't understand other items, they understand that if we reduce inflation from 5% to 1%, how big of a news that will be for mainstream media, and uh, we can have a big boost in the price. That is one aspect which everybody understands, and all the token holders should vote for this referendum. While we are trying to solve some basic issues here, I highly recommend people to talk about it. It's all in your favor to go and uh, vote. Till now, we have 100% votes. Like we have already got like 7.26 million votes in less than a like few hours of posting this. So this 7.26 um, million votes are already saying 100% are saying yes. There is no downside to this change because even the people who are looking for using these funds for some purposes, they have more than enough funds available. Even though, like personally, I believe we should burn even those funds which are already accumulated because uh, we don't we don't have any reason to keep these when we don't know what to do with them. But um, I think we want to keep that as a separate separate referendum so that we can get a buy-in on um, first of all stopping this additional accumulation of uh, inflation. Now. What else is happening, I think I uh, just wanted to highlight. So we have already voted. So by the way, if you are proxying with us, you don't have to vote for referendums. But if you are proxying with us, I would just like to highlight that uh, we have a big decay on the votes. So we have 241,000 votes a decade, and that is 6.5%. So please go and vote, uh, refresh your proxy with us, uh, whatever tool you are using. And uh, please make sure that uh, you know, you are making full use of your votes uh, for block producer, producer uh, selection. Then finally, Liquid Apps is getting a lot of attention. As you know, they are running this um, kind of ICO and they are raising funds in very similar to EOS model. But uh, we had some discussions on many channels. People are asking how this is going to impact EOS in terms of uh, the token price, in terms of the demand for resources. So I want to share my views. I did share my views on Telegram channel of Liquid Apps, but uh, some people are concerned that Liquid Apps, because they are providing cheaper resources, it will actually reduce the token price uh, for EOS, which uh, I com do not completely agree with. Uh, while we need to understand that uh, Liquid Apps is allowing non-active, like when you are not using certain memory, in uh, if they are allowing that memory to be offloaded from mainnet to a DSP, now, in that process, it's making cheaper for DApp developers to use EOS resources. Now, if you are saying that uh, EOS is not a commodity, it's not like Bitcoin, you cannot just make it scarce by keeping the resources expensive and giving less resources for each EOS token so that uh, any DApp which is coming in needs to buy more and more. Uh, that doesn't make sense because that will just kill EOS and that's what happened if you remember in the start of uh, EOS the RAM prices shot up pretty high and there was a lot of FUD around how nobody can build anything on EOS because it's very expensive. On the other hand right now when Liquid Apps is bringing like almost uh, very very cheap RAM people are saying oh now why would I even use EOS. So this is like uh, people are not understanding that by making resources cheaper you will have more people using EOS. And when more people are using EOS and there are actually active transactions happening on EOS network, you still need to stake EOS uh, even though you're using liquid apps because uh, they're only saving you an extra cost of RAM. And even if let's say some people are saying the vCPU will come. Now, anything which doesn't need to run on blockchain, you can still done uh, or doesn't need that level of security which a mainnet provides or blockchain provides. You can do it on DSP or you can do it in a different way. But what it's enabling is, it's enabling uh, scaling of the application by 100x or more. Uh, in a, and we are talking about really using more of EOS mainnet. What it will definitely impact and it is already impacting is uh, the sister chains. Like I see that a lot of people are, are now realizing that one of the value add for sister chains was that they were scaling by providing cheaper resources. Now that reasoning does not exist. And that's where I think uh, people are not happy, like investors are dumping all those chains, the Telos, Bose, all of them are not doing very well recently, uh, even though EOS and the rest of the market are doing well. So that is my view on liquid apps. But I think, um, again, everybody has a different interpretation. I personally feel that uh, it's great for EOS token in long run. In short term, 
if somebody is already building on mainnet, yes, they will uh, spend less EOS, but that's good because that means that you will have really big application which can be developed now and real mass adoption can happen on EOS. And that's how you should see EOS token, not as a commodity like Bitcoin that if it is less, uh, more people will buy it and make it higher. You need to look at it as uh, the EOS token price will increase when more people use EOS, not when um, you get less resources based on each EOS. So that's my view, but I think do share your feedback, how you think. But I overall, I think the EOS, uh, this DAP token is doing well. They are raising quite a lot of money. It's kind of settling down of this price of uh, 0 0.005 or 0 0.006 EOS per DAP token. And uh, so this is uh, continuing. Uh, some people are participating um, in this uh, token sale. Do let us know what you think about it. Now, very exciting thing happened was Item Games, which came out with uh, their preview. So I happened to see this earlier, but they released it yesterday. And uh, as I told you, I have visited their office and I saw some of these uh, uh, games. They are really exciting. Now, they, what they came out with is um, the add on their game store. That means it will be a mobile game store, which will you will be able to directly uh, go and trade your assets. And if you, they have given preview of some of these games. If you look at the quality of the games, they are like, they are, by the way, these games are not running on blockchain. These are the standard games. Uh, and they have explained why it doesn't matter. Like you do not have to run block games on the blockchain. What you need to run is uh, the real use of blockchain is in the digital assets and the trading of digital assets on blockchain. So they are linking your account, any asset you're creating, trading, that's where you need trust. And uh, while they want to maintain the standard user experience of uh, mobile games, uh, they are actually uh, creating really high-end uh, user experience. Uh, and with this kind of, uh, I think, adoption of EOS-based uh, NFTs and uh, actual gamers coming into the system, they are also saying this is a way to earn uh, cryptocurrencies by playing. So while you're having fun, uh, you can actually go and earn these NFTs and you can sell them. Uh, in today's market, it's very difficult to sell peer-to-peer. -peer. There are centralized exchanges which uh, sell these kind of tokens and they make a huge commission and they are not actually easy to trust also. So that's another thing which I, I think you need to understand. So these are some things which um, are very exciting. I'm very excited about item games uh, and I'm also helping them in whatever way possible because I believe they are some of the best apps um, are yet to come. Now the next thing which I want to highlight is EOS Aloha came up with this tool to show us um, all the various block production, uh, like you know, block producers and how many blocks they have produced. Now, if you remember, when um, we were used to talk about uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, there was this mining pools um, which were dominating. And EOS has a great picture of decentralization. Over the period, you see almost uh, 40 to 50 different block producers who have been producing blocks, and they are very well distributed. Uh, even though there are only 21, but, but because of the depots, because of the change, which happened all the time uh, in um, in all these uh, various uh, um, like voting status of top 21, we have this kind of distribution. So I did tweet about it. Uh, this got a lot of attention, a lot of love and hatred from various communities. I think uh, this is, if you can see, it was retweeted so many times and so many people have been talking about it. Um, but I think I just wanted to make sure all of you understand uh, how EOS works and by design there are 21 block producers who are getting equal chance so there is no um, an, uh, domination of one mining pool or something if we can call it mining of course Depot works differently now, moreover if you look at these names they are all over the world they are like not sent like because of the energy consumption being almost zero for EOS uh, there is no one place which has a kind of uh, uh, priority or getting better results by being a block producer just like Bitcoin, Ethereum, proof of work. So this is one thing which you, all of you should understand as an EOS um, token holder or a, or investor, how Depos really creates uh, this kind of uh, open decentralized network uh, versus um, a mining style proof of work where based on how cheap you can get hardware, how cheap you can get electricity, uh, you can become a dominant player. So this is, uh, uh, again, I think everybody knew how this deposit is going to work, but I think this is uh, just a proof of what's really happening over the period of last uh, uh, seven, eight months uh, since the mainnet has been going on. Um, 
So now again, I think uh, this is most of the stuff which we wanted to cover. Um, do send us your feedback on what you feel on the progress of EOS. I think some of these exciting projects we already talked about the MN8 um, item games. I think these are some of the things which are coming as we speak within this month. And uh, these are real world use cases we are talking about now. And the progress is amazing. And I'm really excited about uh, this, uh, how EOS is evolving. And with liquid apps, I think more and more real world use cases will be possible. And we will see that uh, some big, some other use cases will start uh, showing up. And as I keep reminding you, if within Block Start Initiative, we have an incubator in Silicon Valley. Uh, do contact us if you want have some ideas and you want to build. Uh, we, we are building developer teams while we are running these webinars and so on. Uh, for the new developers, we have some experienced developers already working with us and uh, they're available to build a project. And we are working very closely on many of these ideas uh, which we cannot talk about them right now, but uh, in due time, you will start hearing from our um, uh, block start initiative what we are building. And I cannot just wait to tell you more about it, but I hope that we can first finish um, the concepts and some MVPs before we go and bring it to you. So thanks once again for joining and do share and like this video and uh, do send us your feedback. Join us on Telegram or, or, com or Twitter uh, and in, in, I think you should engage with the community. I think that's what will tell you what's going on versus reading the news. Uh, as we keep talking about that news, I think mainstream news does not even know how much progress is happening in EOS world. Thank you for now, and uh, we will be back with more content and look forward to share with you what we learned.